News 3's closed captioning is funded by Sprint Central Telephone, Nevada. You turn to a friend. KDBC Las Vegas. Now, News 3, Nightside. Good evening. 275 shows later, Cheers comes to an end tonight. That's our top story. We'll talk to some folks at our local Cheers bar about what they thought of the final episode. The creators of the sitcom are from Henderson. We'll talk to their friends and family, and we'll introduce you to a real-life Carla, and you can decide if she's like the fictional one. All right, so maybe Cheers closed its doors on the television world, but here in Las Vegas, Cheers is still open and going strong. Tonight, our top story takes us live to our own little Cheers. That's where Tracy Gallagher is. Uh, Tracy didn't happen to see Nami around there, did you? None of the major characters showed up today, but I'll tell you, it sure felt like they were here. It was kind of like saying goodbye to a family friend watching the last episode. The people here will all never forget. Cheers, arguably one of the best television shows ever on television. I asked these people what they'll miss the most, and they said the characters and the shows and the clever writing. The show is over, but the party here, as you can tell, goes on, and we'll check back with you in a little bit, Dave. Okay, thanks a lot. Grace Gallagher at our own local Cheers bar. Pretty wild down there. Of course, the writers of Cheers aren't nearly as famous as the characters they've created over the years, but they do happen to be hometown boys. Glenn and Les Charles grew up in Henderson. Sue Trapathi tracked down some family and friends who remember the good old days. If Cheers is the place where everybody knows your name, then Henderson, Nevada is the place where everybody knew the Charles brothers, at least the ones who have been there a long time. Glenn and his younger brother, Les, graduated from basic high school back in the 1960s. Glenn played football while Les was involved in theater. Back then, no one knew the boys would make it big. Jeff Weesey grew up with the Charles brothers. From what I can recall of Glenn, he always talked about being a writer. And, and I do recall him talking about writing for television, for movies, and so on, and, and to a lesser extent, less as well. But I do remember Glenn talking about being a writer at some time, and I think it was comedy is what he wanted to get into. So it, he wasn't like a psycho joker or anything? No. Uh, Glenn was kind of a laid-back, quiet type guy, but he always had that funny little smirk on his face. Is there an Ernie Pantuso here? That's you, Coach. Speaking. Remember Ernie Pantuso, a.k.a. Coach? Well... Meet the real Ernie Pantuso. So you're the one who inspired the coach character? I don't know that I so much inspired the character, I inspired the name. I think they wanted an unusual name, so they used the name Pantuso. Too long. Yes, quite a bit. Here's a proud parent. As you walk through the Charles household, you can tell it's a Cheers household. Cheers memorabilia everywhere. A picture of the brothers winning an Emmy for Cheers. An Emmy for their riding on the show Taxi and more pictures, including one of their producing credits on the last season of the original Bob Newhart show. Evelyn Charles shared fond memories of her kids growing up. This is Glenn when he learned. Uh, he had a dummy, and he practiced and practiced, thinking to throw his voice so he could keep his mouth closed, you know. Uh -huh. Then he'd invite all the neighbor youngsters in, and then he'd perform for them. Sue Trapathi, News 3. And we will be checking back later to the Cheers Bar here in Las Vegas and introduce you to a kinder, gentler version of Carla at the real Cheers Bar. Hmm. Metro Police homicide investigators spent the evening at a residence way out on West End Road where two decomposing bodies were found earlier. Police aren't saying anything further or releasing any names. Apparently a mountain lion was on the loose in the area of Pecos McLeod and Russell this evening. Police called out animal control. They subdued the big cat and they plan to return it to the wild. There's been a couple of reported drive-by shootings this evening, but no one's reported injured from any gunshot wounds. In fact, most of the rest of the night beat's pretty quiet. Three DUIs for Highway Patrol, some family fights here and there, a brush fire at Charleston and US 95, and Mercy's responding to an accident at Trop and Rainbow at this minute. That's Nightbeat. If the grand jury got through all of its witnesses today, we could see indictments tomorrow in the Frontier beating case. If more witnesses still need to be called, it'll be another week before any indictments are possibly announced. The beating victims, Sean and Glenn White, seen here in this truck, ducked reporters as they left the grand jury room this afternoon. But earlier, culinary workers who saw the fight and didn't get involved in it also showed up to explain what happened. 
testimony in front of the grand jury is private, so we can't tell you what was said, but we did talk to a union rep outside of the jury room for his reaction. I just know that we think we have the best defense team possible. We're going to do whatever it takes. Uh, we're quite concerned about overcharging, about charges that are brought against people that are unheard of in this town, and we'll fight that vigorously. The grand jury won't meet again now until next Thursday. Might be something good to come out of all this in the end, though, Sarah, and that is negotiations to end the strike, a distinct possibility now. The standoff's almost two years old, and Governor Miller's putting on the pressure to settle things. He is calling for an independent fact finder to work out the dispute. The union agreed to that plan some time ago. Today, the Alardi family, Frontier's owners, also agreed. Both sides will sit down with the governor Monday to see if they can find some common ground. And a little dissension in the ranks of the union today. Today, Culinary Chief Jim Arnold fired seven members just a day after his overwhelming victory to a third term as secretary treasurer. Arnold claims the seven were politically involved against him. Of the seven, five are suing the union for $218,000. Business agent Jack Kane, one of those fired, says Arnold and other union officials are hypocrites for terminating them without affording them the standard 30-day grievance procedure that everyone else gets in the union. In Phoenix, Indian leaders told lawmakers new hotels and casinos can be built near the Grand Canyon. Both uh, Wallapai and Colorado River Indian tribes claim they are going into the gambling business in hopes of increasing their tourism industry. Fifteen tribes are planning to build casinos in Arizona. With temperatures heating up in Food for Thought tonight, I thought it would be a good time to take a look at the local ice cream parlors. This is not a complete list of all the places in town, but pretty close to it. Generally, most ice cream shops score very well. All of the Baskin Robbins stores in Las Vegas got solid A ratings from the health department over the past few inspections. So did Big Dipper on West Charleston and Flamingo Ice Cream on East Flamingo. Now, continuing with the highly rated places, the Golden Swirl shops that are in Smith stores all did very well, as did Hagen dazs at the Meadows Mall and Leatherbees on East Sahara. Super Bowl Sundays on Green Valley Parkway gets top scores, as does Tops on Rainbow. L.A. Yogurt on South Nellis does well, too. Rounding out the solid A-list is Scoops on Stephanie. You may notice one major chain is missing from the solid A-list. The Dairy Queen at Eastern scored a B inspection recently with 12 demerits. Not really a bad score, but some of the uh, inspector's remarks include seeing cockroaches during the walk through there and finding potentially hazardous food. The DQ on North Nellis really has a schizophrenic record. In the last year and a half or so, it scored anywhere from an 8A grade to a 39C grade. One more point during that 39 inspection, and the DQ would have been closed down on the spot. This store has gotten three A's in the last several months, so it may be turning things around. Still in the file are several recent complaints that the restaurant and its employees are filthy. Now, one more word on ice cream. If you have one of those ice cream trucks that drives through your neighborhood, make sure that you see a letter like this posted in the truck. Inspectors are worried about some of the unsolicited sellers who are letting the ice cream melt and then refreezing it, which, of course, can make you very sick if you eat it. A once-in-a-lifetime event for a strip performer. We'll tell you more about Vladimir in a moment. <laughs> Colombian authorities finally found that plane that crashed into a mountainside near the city of Medellin yesterday. That story tops the world tonight. All of the 125 passengers and seven crew members died in the crash. Seven Americans were on that flight. Their hometowns have not been released. And Britain's Queen Mother was hospitalized today after a fish bone got stuck in her throat. The 92-year-old mother of Queen Elizabeth II is vacationing in Scotland. She was taken to a hospital in Aberdeen after the incident. She'll remain there overnight for observation. Police say transvestite burglars may be to blame for stealing some artificial breasts in Florida. The store caters to women who've had mastectomies. The owner of the store says she lost about $5,500 worth of the uh, uh, artificial breasts, each one costing between $100 to $500. And now some good news for the guy known as Vladimir. He's the one that flies in the Stardust's Enter the Night show. Today, some fellow performers presented Vladimir with his green card. Family and friends were there. 
Of course, they uh, help toss him into the pool. Boop, there he goes. Vladimir says he can't wait to visit his homeland. And Jimmy Stewart turned 85 today. He and his wife had a small party at their house tonight. 800 people are expected at a public benefit, though, Saturday in Santa Monica. Coming up, lots of sunshine and a little bit cooler than the past few days. Mike Bradley's got the forecast. Stay with us. Apparently, the gang of tears is still going strong, at least the gang in our own local tears. Trace Gallagher is live at the Las Vegas namesake now with more, and probably you're going to scream at us again, Trace, huh? Well, yeah, I'll tell you, Sarah, the show is beside us over, but boy, they are not done partying here. They're going to be here until all hours tonight. And for those who somehow forget that they were here partying, well, we got this nifty little commemorative shirt that says that Norm is going to head down here and cheers any time tonight. They promise us that Norm is going to be here before long. Now, even if Norm doesn't show up here, well, they've got a, another surprise plan. They're going to re-rack the VCR, rack cheers back up, and play it all over again. This party down here may never end, Sarah. Maybe we'll come down after work. I only saw about 15 minutes of it. Thanks, I'll be Trace. waiting for you. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Trace Gallagher live at Cheers. Dave? You're ready to scream, I guess. <laughs> when uh, creators of the Cheers uh, show first sat down in the Bull and Finch bar, they knew they had finally found the place to model their show after. It is one of the most popular tourist attractions in Boston, the Bull and Finch. But is there a real-life Woody or Carla working there? We sent our own Terry Russell to Boston to find out. If you're expecting the real-life Cheers bar to look exactly like what you see on the TV series, you might be a little disappointed with the Bull and Finch. British tourists Neil Hanlon and Chris Hughes explain it this way. So you guys have got a grip on it. You didn't come in here and ask where Ted Danson was or anything. No, no, no. for the bears. If you come here for the beer, someone like John McDonald will probably pour it for you. He's been doing this for six years now. Every day is like a new, a new experience because everybody, you get new faces every single day. Paula Conway might be your waitress. Although not as caustic as Carla, Paula does have her own brand of sharp wits. Hiding it under the table, trying to steal a menu. She tried to steal one, too. <laughs> Whole table's gone back. The sugar packets are gone. The, uh, the napkins are gone. The placemats. Anything they can get their hands on. We've had things ripped off the wall. It's amazing what they'll take. Anything that's not nailed down. Replacing menus and knickknacks. It's the price of fame. With all the popularity of Cheers, you may think there's one group of people that have lost out. The regulars here at the Bull and Finch. Not so. The owner says he's blocked off a special corner for the regulars. They also get their own pewter mug. And the bar also has its own version of the American Express card. Regulars don't leave home without it. And because Sunday is one of the busiest days here, they don't leave home at all. Terry Russell, News 3. And yes, there is an actual restaurant upstairs from the Bull and Finch. I like the idea of that card. Not a bad idea. There you yeah. go. Somebody explain the concept of last call, please, for me. I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> we know better. <laughs> yeah, right. If they'd had chairs here, nobody would have ever left the bar. Absolutely. Right. Let's go outside. Another nice day. A little bit cooler temperatures in store for us as we get into the weekend. Clear skies at 11 o'clock. Temperature 81 degrees. Pressure on the rise at 29.73. Humidity 25%. Wind southwest at 13 miles per hour. And air quality in the moderate category. Could have been a little bit better in the valley today. Warm temperatures continue. About 7 degrees on the high side for the high. 96. Morning low 9 degrees warmer than normal as it uh, dropped down to 70 this morning. Record high 102. Set back in 1984. Record low of 46 degrees was set back in 1975. A little break in our mini heat wave the next couple of days, but we're going to be back into the mid-90s on Sunday. So if you're making outside plans this weekend, a little bit cooler on the Saturday afternoon. A couple of dominant features on the satellite. First big storm up in the Gulf of Alaska. Second strong high-pressure ridge extending from the southwest all the way down into the Pacific, really clearing things out. As you can see, the past 24 hours, a little bit of moisture starting to penetrate that high, but you can see it's starting to skirt uh, the lower edges of it. I think it's going to remain uh, pretty strong. That storm, though, is going to move inland, and as it does, it's going to and as it does, it's going to swing a little bit of cooler air down our way. Uh, so look for temperatures probably down about five degrees tomorrow and Saturday. Lots of sun, light to moderate winds, then heating up uh, back again on uh, Sunday. Boy, that high really rotating that moisture across. 
very strong thunderstorms from the Idaho Panhandle all the way down into New Mexico. Large hail outside Boulder, Colorado. Still heavy rain falling tonight, as you can see, from the uh, Oregon and Washington coast all the way down into the southern Rockies. For tomorrow, that storm system moving again slowly to the east, taking the thunderstorms with it from Montana all the way down into parts of uh, Kansas and uh, Oklahoma, Texas getting some late in the afternoon. Pretty nice day across the east. That'll uh, continue for tomorrow. A few isolated thunderstorms across the Carolina and Virginia mountains. And that's just about it. 70s and 80s, except for around the Great Lakes. Chicago at about 68 tomorrow. Cleveland, 64 degrees. 72, nice day in New York City. 70 in Charlotte, North Carolina. 73, Atlanta, 85 degrees uh, down in Miami. A little bit muggy around the uh, Gulf Coast. 97, Phoenix, 75, L.A. tomorrow. 66, San Francisco, 63. Seattle, Washington, 80. Nice day in Salt Lake City. We'll be generally in the uh, 80s tomorrow, some 70s up north, 90s, mid-90s down in Laughlin, getting up to about 96. Overnight, clear skies, light winds, and lows in the upper 60s. For tomorrow, sunny, a little cooler as we uh, top out at about 90 here in the valley. Wind southwest 10 to 20 miles per hour out on the lakes. High 93, water temp about 73 degrees. Wind's a little gusty in the afternoon, getting up to about 25 miles per hour out of the south. Headed up to the high country, it should be gorgeous, sunny and mild with highs of about 70 degrees. Five-day forecast looking for a little dip in the temperatures, but they'll be coming back up again. And some clouds beginning to... Uh, become an issue come Monday and Tuesday with just a slight chance of uh, getting into some showers right now. The weekend is shaping up. So uh, last call go, for the uh, warm we'll temperatures. Give you an a inspection on that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't eat off this suit, though. It needs to be clean. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait for the weekend. You might get a C after that. Thanks, okay. Mike. Have a good day tomorrow. Coming up in sports, the coach disappears. The Phoenix Suns look to take the kick out of the Spurs. Colin Cowherd has highlights after this. Right the floor as he attacks and then usually he'll try to dunk with his left hand. So you mean teams actually dare to schedule sports tonight on the night of Cheers? Oh, wish final? I could have watched. Too busy back in the oh, day, as yeah, usual. Labor <laughs> just didn't have time. Oh, God. We're try to get our work done early tonight yeah, so we can yeah, watch right. a little bit of Cheers. I think we're going to see a Phoenix Bulls NBA title. Jerry Tarkanian and John Lucas had something in common after all. They both lost their last game as coach of the Spurs. Lucas turned this team around, but they had to win tonight against the Suns where it was Arriva Derchi. Charles Barkley got Phoenix off to a quick start. They led by six Barkley after one quarter and after this. Suns considered a finesse team, not Barkley. much of a power game, but plenty of style. You just saw this. We'll see it again. Tom Chambers knifes through two, reverse jam. Spurs by two at half. They extend the lead to seven, entering the fourth quarter. Sean Elliott clever moves in the paint. But Barkley and company battled back. Game tied at 100. Barkley's ball top of the key. Here's your game. Charles and David Robinson, he buried it. San Antonio, one last chance to tie things. David Robinson almost tripped. He never recovered. The shot was blocked. Phoenix. Finishes off the Spurs, your final 102-100. They win the series four games to two. The Seattle Sonics could wrap up their series with a win over the Rockets, and their chances look good early. Michael Cage rebounds and jams it. Then Seattle kind of fell apart. Turnovers in bunches. Rockets off and running. Vernon Maxwell. Otis Thorpe and the one-hand left-hand jam. Houston couldn't miss in the third. Watch this. Maxwell. Kind of forgets the time. Good to the last second shot. Nails it. Houston still alive. Series tied at three. 103-90. They really led by much, much more. And uh, that's score kind of deceiving. Larry Brown is the Sam Malone of NBA coaches. Handsome, confident, all the tools, but occasionally no toolbox. Today, Brown quit as coach of the Clippers. No explanation. Didn't tell anybody. Just walked out of the offices. Brown has coached many different teams in the NBA and collegiately. He's moved around a lot, but this move was a stunner. Hey, Larry, it was you know, a season and a half, and uh, you know, we're very you know, happy with Larry Brown, the job he did, and we were just looking forward to him uh, coaching his team next season. Uh, no one really anticipated this move. Hockey we go. New York Islanders down two games to none to Montreal on shaky ice in this one. Third period, New York led 1-0. Vincent, our favorite, Dampus, in a wild scramble in front of the net, finally gets a stick in it. The flurry of shots tied the game at one. Contest goes to overtime. Montreal with a puck. Guy Car Charbonneau, Carbonneau. He's, he's Canadian. I can't pronounce it. Anyway, it's 2-1 Canadians. They win it and take a stranglehold on the Islanders with a 3-0 series lead. High school state baseball tourney opened up today at UNLV. Carson from up north. Blitz Bonanza 13 to 5 in the night game. Green Valley took on Reed. Gators Tom LaRosa rips a ball to the alley in left center field. Bounces over the wall. Run scores. It's all Gators 11 to 4. Green Valley and Carson, the two favorites in this tournament. 
The Gators look like it tonight. Chad Stevenson's sacrifice fly added to the lead. Brian Schultz will beat the throw, which is off the line. Green Valley wins it comfortably, 15 to four. Scores in baseball, both leagues. Toronto slips past Boston 4-3. Surprised the Red Sox players even showed up for that one. Oakland 4, Kansas City 1 in 12. It's also Seattle over Texas. Detroit beats Milwaukee 6 to 2, rounding it out in the American League earlier today. Cleveland 3 and Baltimore 1. A few games in the National League include St. Louis losing or uh, beating. Chicago. I don't even give them credit when they win. 6 to 3. Philadelphia beats Montreal 9 to 3. Also tonight, it's a San Diego winner and San Francisco over the Reds. All right, Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson as a 42 to 1 underdog. You probably told your friends you bet on Buster. You're lying. The only thing more embarrassing than betting on a 42 to 1 underdog is not betting on one that wins. Heavyweight champ Riddick Bowe, 42 to 1 favorite Saturday when he fights Jesse Ferguson. Bowe tipped the scales at 244, looked a little flabby. Don't tell him I said that, I'll deny it. Bowe's been criticized for fighting Ferguson, who's a former sparring partner for Mike Tyson and has little chance to win as the odds suggest. Ferguson came in at 224, 20 pounds lighter than Bowe. He actually looked in better shape, but. He's lost eight of his last 13. I think Bigfoot Martin deserves another oh, shot. Give me that. <laughs> is he still around? I think he is. And actually, people are kind of waiting for the uh, George Foreman, uh, Tommy Morrison fight, which should actually be a great fight mm. coming up in June. That will be in Las Vegas. Great Tommy fight. Morrison. All right. All right. Thanks, Tom. When we come back, one of the world's most popular threesomes is getting back together. We'll tell you who they are and their plans for a great comeback coming up next. I think I know. Well, I don't think you know either. Remember Larry, Moe, and Curly? Well, the Three Stooges are getting back together. Jeffrey Scott, grandson of Moe Howard, will be performing a trio with two other comics. They have agreed to a movie deal with Columbia Pictures worth $1.5 million. Why I ought to... And in February, Scott will begin a daily live show at the MGM Grand Hotel and Theme Park right here in Las Vegas. And just one more Cheers story for you, if you can stand it. The cast of Cheers, they aren't the only ones at Boston's Bull and Finch Bar. Tonight's show host Jay Leno will broadcast live from there tonight. Crew members work to ready the bar for tonight's program. This is the first time the Tonight Show has broadcast from a non-studio location. In his monologue, Leno says, you know, times are tough, ladies and gentlemen, when people who just sit around in bars all day lose their jobs. Can you imagine? <clears throat> you know, um... I guess it is a little overkill, don't you think? I, you know, I, I think Cheers. it is, but I, I watched it's sentimental it, too. Yeah, as much as I could tonight. It looked like it was a great show. But and it's on next. Yeah, and we'll see it on tape when I get home. We'll see you tomorrow. Right.